I'm Jill from KiteCo and today we're going to look at some work in Affinity Designer and Affinity Designer in particular in relation to sublimation and sublimating fabric for bag patterns. I don't know if you've seen my new pant in Sander which is down that side. <laughs> um, they're the sublimation prints I've done for that and so I'm going to look at how we can resize our images and fit them into a square or a simple pattern piece so that we can print out just what we need and the right shapes with the images and not lose too much off our images. So I'm not a specialist in Affinity Designer, it's something I really enjoy and I've done it for quite some time, um, but I'll try and help you out where I can and if there's any questions you have or anything you'd like to learn, if I don't know I will do some research and do a video on it, so do let me know in the comments below. So let's have a look at Affinity Designer now. So this is Affinity Designer. So we will start by opening a new file. So we go new and we I like to go for a bigger one. So it's almost like then you've got more room. We want to make sure our DPI is at 300 and we I want to create an artboard. So what this is basically doing is you've got a piece of paper and it's on a table and you can put things outside the paper onto the table as it were. So let's have a look down here and have a bit of a look around. We've got our different file options here. We've got a lot of things along here. So just have a play and get yourself familiar with it if you are new to Affinity. I'm going to assume that you have a little bit of knowledge and know how to draw basic rectangles and things like that. If I need to do a really basic beginner's video, please comment down below and ask me to do that. So basically I'm going to up my stroke so that we can draw a rectangle and we've got our layers tab. Now I will explain the layers tab a little bit. So at the moment we have got one layer which is our piece of paper on a table and down here we've got the place that things are on the table and we've got our dimensions of whatever we need. So to select something in a graphics program it's left click. So we want to select our rectangle tool and say for example we want to put the pocket on the front of a tote and we know that our pocket pattern piece is say 10 by 15 centimeters um, or your pattern piece is an odd shape but will fit in the rectangle of a 10 by 15 so let's draw a 10 by 15 rectangle so to do that we click we click and drag and hold that left mouse and you see the little black numbers that are beside my left hand here's they are saying how big it is so if I want to do a 15 by 10 for example let's have a look so that's 150 by 100 that's close enough but do we want to go close enough the other thing we've also got to fill so if we always go back to the triangle just so that it stops doing what it was doing come to the color button now you see this is fill and the black is the outline so if we don't want to fill we click this little stop symbol or the symbol that has nothing and as you can see now that's just an outline and as you can see down on our board here we've got our outline which when you click on that it selects that and we've got a rectangle when you select that it selects that but if we want that to be exactly the size we want come down here to our transform panel so now it's saying it's 150.5 now I'm not sure what this is in inches but it's you can set yours up to be inches or metric so if I type 150 in there go down to this one and type in 100 and go enter that is now exactly 150 by 100 or 15 centimeters by 10 so that's the size of our pocket we're just saying it is we're not sure if it is or not but that's what we're saying we need a piece of print that size to cut our pocket out of so okay what we want to do is put an image in here so if we go file and place and I want lace let's put some lace in there now that's attached it with a little arrow and where I drop that is where it's going to drop it so as you can see if we it's a little bit difficult to get it the right size if we just put it to the size and go like this and like this it's messing with the print and we don't want to do that uh, control Z is go back by the way it's a really handy button 
<laughs> so what we want to do is I put it so that it, I can see the top click on this button little center in the middle hold your shift button down and drag that down and as you can see it is reducing it on equal portions all the way around and we want to get it as close as we possibly can now the other way of doing that is to use your transform down here and put in one measurement and not the other and as you can see that's now the right size because obviously this is two dimension which I didn't think it was but it is so that's the right size for our pattern so that's fine if we want it small I'll put it back to the size it was now if we don't want it smaller we want to keep it the same size what we can do is put that behind our rectangle so we're going to bring our rectangle over the top of it I move that in so you can see it and I'll make the rectangle maybe we'll put that give it a red border and a bit more of a stroke so you can see it so that's our pattern piece and we want it the right size but we want to keep the lace the same size so what we could do click the lace come over here to the vector crop tool click that and then we can just simply bring those in until it meets our red line and as you can see that's making the image smaller and not changing the size of our image so if you're wanting all the pieces to be the same and you've printed other pieces at that size for the bag then you probably want to do it that way choose the rectangle down here delete that and what you're left with is the image at the right size of your tote pattern select the lace so you've selected it down here come up to file and go print now you'll need to go into properties to select if you've set up a preset for your sublimation I'm not going to be going into the best print settings at this stage because um, there is plenty of information out there and I'm sure you've had a play with it if that's something that is required I can let you know what I use but it doesn't necessarily work for everybody because printers are very different so then we want to come down to range because at the moment it's trying to print our whole piece of paper or our whole um, artboard so we want to come down to selection only then we want to have scale at 100% and as you can see that is just going to print that piece in the middle of a paper so then we would just push OK to print all right so let's go back to our file this is another way of doing that as well so we've got here on our artboard we've got one rectangle and one lace image now if you're wanting the image to be in there's another way of doing it so we've if you click on your lace and hold it down so you've got your left click you're holding it slide it up to be in this whole of the rectangle and across to the word rectangle and then let go as you can see it's put the image inside the rectangle so if we click on it now we can move the lace around and it stays in the rectangle so we can line it up to be exactly where we might want it so that it's centered in there and the image looks good around all pieces but it has to fit the whole image and maybe we like that and so we can print it at that so you can still take the color off the rectangle go to the stroke and drop the rectangle down so it's exactly the same and it will stay at the same size so again select it and print and do exactly what you did before choose your preset change range to be selection make sure scale is 100 and print so this application has lots of fun little things so let's go back we'll just keep going back till we're out of there so we've got I'll make that color it is red again so we'll put that down there move that out of the way so let's have a look at how else we can use this it's called nesting let's draw a circle and let's draw a heart oops I haven't got a border on those have I so go back to your swatches because I took that off before and let's put a border on them so let's pretend this is a different pattern piece and we want all three of them to be printing out on the paper 
Because normally you would have to print this out and you would then cut them out and you couldn't manipulate where you had them if your fabric you wanted to do a fussy cut or something like that. Or so we've got three shapes, so we want three lots of our image. So we can either go up and go copy and paste, and that's put another one on the top. So we'll move that up there as you will put it out there. Or we can go right click, copy, right click, paste, and it gives us another copy. So we'll just put it out there. So what we're wanting to do is put those under our shapes like that. But if we're wanting them all to be in the middle point, we want to go like that, come up to our alignment, go center and center and apply, and do that with all of them, center, center and apply. And the reason we could do this is then all the center, if we've got the center of an image that we want to be the main feature, then that is going to be in the middle. So notice it doesn't show things off That's the board. To do it's it. still there, it's just not visible. Right, so we now got what looks like three images. So if we come over here and we can check that one, now that we know that is sitting over our heart. So we want to left click that, drag it down until it's in our heart and take it across and put it over the word. So that one we know is over our circle. So again, left click, hold it, drag it down till it's over the circle and across to over the word. And that leaves us one more, which is the rectangle. Left click, hold, drag it over the rectangle and across to over the word rectangle. And now you've got three pieces perfectly lined that could be different pattern pieces that you want the same print in. So to move these, you need to click on the on the ellipse here and move it to where you want. Click on the heart and move that where you want. Click on the rectangle and move that over. Then you could select all three of them, go File, Print, and again, always get to the habit of doing that and selecting what it is. Artboard needs to go to Selection and there you go. You can now print all three of them all at once, save you lots of ink and lots of paper. So remember the scale has to be 100. So because if you've got an image that's a picture, you know that you're going to get someone's head up here and the feet down here, whereas it doesn't matter when it's only a generic pattern like a lace. But then if it's a picture, you will get three individual pictures and they could be separate pattern pieces. So that's how you can also, as I said before, take the, sto the stroke off those by going stroke zero. So that's how we can nest, that's what it's called, by putting that image in a shape, our different pattern pieces. So that has lots of uses with sublimation. And I hope I've explained that clearly enough. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. So that is how we nest our images into a shape to cover our pattern pieces. So you could just do lots of rectangles the same size for your different pattern pieces, or you can do shapes or anything like that if you've got the shape on your computer. I will do another video on how to fussy cut nested shapes so that you get the exact right point of the image on the right point as you need it for your bag. And if this is the first time to your my channel, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe because it does help content creators out.